Way 31 Hometown News, a tornado confirmed in Priceville. Just how strong the National Weather Service says this twister was and the damage it caused. And there are new recommendations on when Alabama hunters and fishermen can go out and look for game. Plus, Huntsville Speedway roars back to life. Coming up in sports, we hear from drivers who've been waiting for this moment for quite a while. The news starts now. This is home. Way 31 Hometown News starts now. A principal with Huntsville City School sends out a message saying that a student has died. In reality, that student is still recovering at the hospital. Good evening, I'm Bill Young. And I'm Demetria McClinton. Way 31's Kat Reed has been in touch with the family and the school district. She joins us in studio to explain what happened and how that student is doing now. Kat. Well, 15-year-old Demarcus Franks is one of the two students who was struck by a car on Memorial Parkway on Wednesday. Franks was transported to the hospital in critical condition. Then, on Thursday night, his principal at Huntsville High School sent out the worst possible news. In an email to parents, Principal Aaron King wrote, quote, I regret to inform you that one of our students, Demarcus Franks, passed away this evening from injuries suffered from a traffic accident on Wednesday. We extend our heartfelt sympathy to the Franks family and would ask that you keep his family in your thoughts and prayers. Now, in the email, he went on to say crisis counselors would be at the school on Friday to offer support to grieving students. But this morning, the principal sent out a different email, and this one said Franks was actually alive and expected to recover. His family was understandably upset about the mix-up, but his mother, Kendra Ellison, told me she's just trying to focus on her son and his health right now. Huntsville City School spokesman Keith Ward couldn't explain exactly how this happened, but he says the district will put new procedures in place so it doesn't happen again. Both the deputy superintendent and the director of secondary education visited the hospital and apologized to the family today. Franks is in stable condition and his mother says doctors are currently trying to wean him off a ventilator. Each night we have your top story and weather together. So let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Chris Smith. Before I get into the forecast, I wanted to break down exactly what happened between Hartzell and Priceville yesterday. The National Weather Service declared this tornado as an EF2. Started just north of Hartzell, went over I-65 through Priceville, and ended just before Lily Pond. It was rated an EF2. It was on the ground for roughly 15 minutes. Top wind speeds 115 miles per hour with maximum width 200 yards. And the length of the tornado went eight and a half miles. Very impressive. And of course, all the damage as a result. But throughout your forecast, 64 on Saturday, 67 on Sunday. For Scottsboro, temperatures holding in the 60s throughout the weekend. And for Muscle Shoals, 64 on Saturday to 69 on Sunday. And for Decatur, 62 tomorrow and 66 on Sunday. Bill? We want to get to some breaking news coming up in Huntsville right now. As Way 31 has confirmed, there has been a stabbing at Bram Avenue and Indiana Street that was just a little while ago. Huntsville police tell us that their two men were transported to the hospital. No word on their injuries. This apparently started as a fight and escalated. Now to continuing coverage of the dangerous storms that hit the Tennessee Valley. As some people are still cleaning up, the National Weather Service, as you've just heard, has confirmed that an EF2 tornado touched down in Priceville. The damage left behind in Priceville is significant. Another possible tornado may have touched down just west of Birmingham. We want to break down these storms for you. Let's get started in Priceville, Morgan County. Take a look. Lots of trees down. More than half a dozen homes along Autumnwood Trail were damaged. We talked to one family who had trees end up crashing into their living room. All day long, dozens of volunteers were out there helping to cut down trees or even just to help pass out water. And even with all this damage, miraculously, nobody was hurt. There are still reports of power outages in the Limestone County area. Crews have been fixing power lines and utility poles since late last night. Crews are hoping to have all power restored tonight. Now to Fayette County, just west of Birmingham, that is where the National Weather Service is still trying to confirm if a tornado did touch down and cause this damage. The county emergency management director said that a barn was destroyed, two other buildings were damaged, but again, no reports of anybody getting hurt. But the damage isn't just limited to Alabama. Once the storm system moved out of Tennessee Valley, it bore down on middle Georgia. In Taylor County, wind uprooted trees and even split them into pieces. Taylor County resident Willie Askin says he took cover in his bathroom before finding a tree had crushed the back deck on his home. Then I got up, went in the bathroom, Waited a while, then came out, and uh, my daughter-in-law looked out. She said, the tree is on the window. So that's when I came out and uh, 
discovered that it had towed the deck off and knocked down some uh, light fixtures in the house. A lot of people say they'll spend this weekend cleaning up. Some are asking the Red Cross for help. There's some new details tonight about a shooting in Huntsville. Police have now arrested 18-year-old Travion Lanier for a shooting that happened Wednesday on Poplar Avenue. Authorities say that Lanier shot Adrian Alexander multiple times. Alexander was taken to Huntsville Hospital. At last check, he's still in critical condition. Lanier has now been charged with first-degree assault. He's currently in the Madison County, Huntsville Madison County Metro Jail. A Madison man who was arrested yesterday on domestic violence charges now also faces a rape charge. Investigators with the Limestone County Sheriff's Office say Rory Odie assaulted his girlfriend in front of her three children. He's currently in jail on more than $50,000 bond. Governor Robert Bentley going to head back to the Tennessee Valley on Monday. He's going to be here at the Limestone Correctional Facility in Harvest and meet with prison officials. Limestone is a maximum security prison, which is currently at 133% capacity. The governor is expected to address his prison reform plan, which would use a bond to pay for new prisons. Alabama's Conservation Advisory Board recommending some changes ahead of the next hunting season. Right now, they still need legislative approval. The plan is to have gun deer season run from November 19, 2016 till February 10, 2017. Other proposed changes involve dog deer hunters, plus extended squirrel, rabbit, and turkey hunting seasons. We've got a lot more information about the proposed changes in the story that we've posted to WadeTV.com. From Way 31's Decatur Newsroom, a funeral for Athens City Councilman Jimmy Gill is planned for tomorrow. Gill died Sunday after two bouts with cancer. The funeral is tomorrow at 2.30 at Lindsay Lane Baptist Church with burial at Thatchman Cemetery. We have our finger on the pulse of the Rocket City and everything that makes our area tick. Here's a roundup of your local beats. I'm Holly Prosser with RedstoneAlabama.com and as storms rolled across the Tennessee Valley Thursday night, there was a short time where it looked like Redstone Arsenal might be hit by a tornado. Luckily, that did not happen, but Colonel Bill Marks says they've been working for years to ensure that if the arsenal is hit, they're prepared. On April 27th of 2011, the arsenal was without power for days. Working on backup generators is certainly not ideal when your mission has a global impact. That's why Colonel Bill Marks, the garrison commander, says they immediately started working to mitigate the chance of power outages in the future by strengthening the poles and clearing the lands around the lines. You've seen uh, uh, some installations of cement telephone poles to replace some of the wood telephone poles to be more robust during uh, times of uh, bad weather. Uh, we're also cutting back um, a lot of our tree lines so that straight line winds or other types of uh, um, natural uh, anomalies uh, don't knock out the power. There is no way to be 100% sure that the arsenal will not lose power again, but Mark says little steps like these lessen the likelihood drastically. For more, you can check out redstonealabama.com. In SpaceAlabama.com, not all raindrops are created equal. Its size depends on several factors, including a cloud's location and where the drops form inside the cloud. Thanks to NASA and Japan's Aerospace Exploration Agency Global Precipitation Measurement Mission, they can now analyze three-dimensional snapshots of raindrops and snowflakes from all around the world. Their goal is to better understand and prepare for extreme weather events. And from TechAlabama.com, AT&T giving internet customers more data. But you better not exceed your cap. Like Comcast, AT&T is going to start charging fees if you go over your allotted monthly data. The fees are $10 every time you break your cap. We have specifics on this revised plan on TechAlabama.com. Meantime, Verizon announced today that customers will soon be charged $20 to upgrade their phones. The new fee goes into effect on Monday. This new fee will be for those who are not covered by a contract. They say they need to do it because customers are upgrading more often and there's a higher device turnover. A big mess near Montgomery and it has nothing to do with politics. And coming up on Way 31 Hometown News, what led to an entire delivery truck ending up 12 feet underground and the production it's going to take to correct the problem. Chris. Well, no rains, lots of cloud cover for today, but how does your weekend look? We'll let you know if you can expect full sunshine and warm temperatures for your weekend coming up after the break.